Welcome to the first edition of Stress Management or Strength Through Stress video for you to go ahead and learn from. And you go ahead and ask, why is AAA Physical Therapy providing such series of videos or educational videos? The reason being is that we are fully aware of the mind and body connection and at times when we see patients here is that some could be triggered the pain or discomfort are triggered by stressors for that matter and that's why we're providing these in order to help the people that we work with and see if it could help them out on how they work with their pain or any discomfort for that matter. So given that, let me ask you first, what is stress for you? So feel free to go ahead and pause this video and then come up with your own definition of what stress is. And also, I would love for you to go ahead and identify what you want to gain or learn from these series of videos. So feel free to pause right now and then hit the play button again once you're done answering that. Now, I'll share some of the definitions of what stress is, but before I provide specific examples of what they are, What I want you to go ahead and share with you is that stress is not necessarily bad all the time. We actually need stress in order to become better. Think about this. For physical therapy, most of the things that you will do are exercises in order to strengthen the muscles that you need to strengthen. For example, for common back issues, one of the common things that need to be done is to strengthen the core. And you cannot do that by not doing anything, but you have to actually work on it by doing some stretches and exercises. So technically speaking, you are putting stress on your body in order to get better. And that's the physical side of that. So think about all the other aspects of you as a human being. All the things that you have to go through is that all of these stressors is to go ahead and make you become a better person. Now, let's move on to specific things. Why, why the stress and why, why do we get stressed? If we view it from a negative point of view as stress is that there's absence of inner peace. But if we want to view it from a positive point of view of what stress is, is that we want to gain inner peace. I hope you see the difference between the two there. The other dichotomy here is that we lose control or there's loss of control. So that's a negative way of viewing stress or the positive way is that trying to go ahead and identify is how we are trying to gain some level of control with whatever that's going on in our lives the other thing too is the, the other way to define stress is anxiety or excitement anxiety on the negative side excitement on the positive side wherein you have these events or responsibilities and you don't have the necessary coping abilities or resources to be able to go ahead and, and take care of such responsibilities or the events that's going on with your life right now. Now, I mentioned earlier, if, for example, if you have back pain, for the most part, we try to strengthen the core, stretch the back muscles, stretch the hamstring, and so on and so forth, is that the other definition of stress is the wear and tear of the body. But as I mentioned, we also strengthen the body. And that's putting stress on our bodies for that matter. 
So again, you can see it from a positive point of view or a negative point of view. So as I shared earlier regarding events and responsibilities, the other way to, to view stress as well is that uh, the demands for us to be able to adapt to our ever-changing lives, whether good or bad, these are stressors right here. Now, uh, the last one to be able, the last thing that I would want to share with you is the perceived threat or gain, for that matter, in, in relation to your mental, physical, spiritual, or emotional well-being. And these threats, or gain for that matter, whether it's real or imagined, one way or another, contribute to stressors. So, are you, or the way you define stress, is it pretty much related to what scholars have identified how stress is defined? Now, let's go ahead and move on to uh, stress response. The, we, as human beings, we have evolved based on the fight or flight response. And for the most part, it undergoes through the five senses that we have based on the stimuli that we we experience the external world. I mean, obviously, if a lion or any other carnivore is about to go ahead and devour you, you can imagine your fight or flight response kicking in. You see it, you hear it, or if you're already feeling it, that the jaw is around you, no, not good, all right? Now, you also have to go ahead and identify what is threat and what is perceived threat for you or non-threatening for you. And here we are activated, in we, we activate our endocrine systems to go ahead and identify of, of, are we going to fight this or are we going to flee the situation? Of course, a small poodle trying to attack you, the, I don't know, it's not, it's not going to be as scary as a grizzly bear about to maul you. But even gentle animals that are perceived gentle, gentle animals, such as giraffes, if, they, if these guys trample you or kick you, you can imagine how much you have to go ahead and fight or flee that situation. And so these are activated, and, then, and, and what we try to go ahead and continue to achieve is that is there's some level of homeostasis or, or, or calmness. And that's what we want to go ahead and gain based on the stressors that I've identified earlier in terms of the definition. Now, another stress response, the way they've explained it, is that the general adaptation syndrome. So you are alarmed that something's about to go ahead and attack you. And you try to resist again with the fight or flight thing. And then how much would you be able to go ahead and fight this thing or continue to run away from this thing? And then to the point that you become exhausted. And that is the general adaptation uh, syndrome. So alarm reaction. You're late for a meeting or you're late for an exam. And the resistance of trying to go ahead and just get to that meeting or job interview or exam for that matter. And then and then you go you go to that specific event and then you try to have some level of resistance to be able to perform well. And you can imagine after that you're going to go ahead and be exhausted. So those are the um, stress responses there. <laughs> and speaking of stress responses, the light just went out. Let me switch that on. This is a good break. Go ahead and pause. All right, 
let's get back to that. It's good to stand up anyway. <laughs> Can't just go ahead and sit down here, right? And hopefully that's something that you've done as well. So let's move on to types of stressors. Is it possible to go ahead and think that the season, especially if you, you, if you live in an environment where there are four seasons, would that impact your well-being? And also, I'd like you to go ahead and think of how your values, your attitudes, your perceptions to go ahead and protect, defend, to protect and defend your ego and your identity. Would these be stressors as well? So you go ahead and identify what values do you have and whenever your values are being questioned or your thoughts and and the rea reality around you is not working well. And then you can imagine how much your ego is very much fragile. And you're always trying to go ahead and defend and protect it in order not to get hurt. Other types of stressors, social media and other social influences, do you think these add to your stress? Or that's something that sharpens you and makes you better. And it's interesting I'm talking about social media is that I'm doing this and I'm going to go ahead and post it on YouTube and Vimeo. So speaking of YouTube and all the other gadgets that you can think of, do you think techno stress is real? So you go ahead and identify what are the, your stressors right now. And you have to remember it's not only the bad things, but you also identify what the good stressors are as well. And here we try to approach things from a holistic approach on how to manage and work with stress and gain strength through stress. So as I mentioned earlier, how are you taking care of yourself from a spiritual point of view? No, I'm not going to go ahead and say that one religion is better than the other. It's just that you go ahead and identify what type of faith that would work best for you to understand and gain that spirituality that you want to go ahead and gain. <clears throat> the next one is emotional well-being. So we will learn more a little bit later on regarding emotional intelligence and how we can harness that and sharpen that and how we are able to go ahead and use emotions to our advantage for the most part. Not to manipulate, but to be able to go ahead and help others as well. <clears throat> the other part of your well-being is the mental and the intellectual side. How are you feeding your brain of positive things and all I'm going to share is that I, I commend you for watching this video because hopefully cognitively you are being challenged on how to use and, and make your brain work a little bit more. And of course, this being a physical therapy practice, how about your physical well-being? So as a personal trainer, that's going to be part of what I'm, I'll be sharing here. So overall, how do you take care of yourself? So this is pretty much the wrap up of this first video regarding strength through stress or stress management. I'm looking forward to have you as a, as a viewer for the next series of stress management and strength through stress. Thank you.